Hello and welcome to the lab number 10. So today we will be covering the zero forcing equalizer and also the uh, demodulation part. So let me get the laser pointer. So far we covered the transmitter side in the transmitter, this was the transmitter side. In transmitter side, we generated random bits. Then we reshaped the bits. Uh, then uh, done the FEC coding there, and then applied also the black interleaver. And after the black interleaver, we performed two kind of modulation. One was the BPSK modulation, and the other one was the four core modulation. And after this modulation part, we transmitted or modulated symbols into the noisy channel. So the noisy channel was, there were, we used two noisy channels. One was the AWGM channel and the other one was the relay channel that we saw in the previous lab. So this was the transmitter part. This is the channel part. And now today we are going to study the starting, uh, today we are going to start the uh, receiver part. So the receiver part uh, started with a very simple kind of equalizer, which is the zero forcing equalizer. This is not the one. There are, of course, a couple of other equalizer like SVD or the MMSE or uh, zero, pre zero forcing precoder, etc. So that kind of equalizer are used, but we are using one of the most simplest one. And after that, uh, we will demodulate the signal. So demodulation is a uh, almost the reciprocal process of that uh, modulation process that we had covered here. So let's get started. And before going to explain you this slide, I think it's not so clear in the slide. So I'll switch to the drawing. Uh, I'll give you some details and then we will come back to the slide. And finally, we will go to the mat So I'll switch off my share screen from here and I'll switch to the drawing. So this is probably the uh, lab number 10. And we are going to study uh, the zero forcing equalizer. But before the zero forcing equalizer, let me explain you uh, the MIMO channel. Mm, so far, we discussed this part. This was our transmitter. And then, uh, here is our receiver. And in between the transmitter and the receiver, there was a channel. So we used two kind of channel models. So we, this is the channel. So transmitter transmitted the symbols. The symbols came into the channel. The channel added some noise to the symbols and those are received at the receiver and the receiver is trying at best to recover the original symbol. Now, what, uh, what is happening here? Actually, uh, in the, so far, we are uh, only considering one antenna at the transmitter side and one antenna at the receiver side, which means that there is, this is SISO system, which is single input and single output. Uh, however, in the LT and uh, the more uh, other uh, OFDM systems, this is not the case. There are multiple antennas at the transmitter and multiple antennas at the receiver. So for sake of simplicity, I'm using SISO system, a uh, single input, single, single output system. But generally, it's different. There, 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 is, there are multiple antennas at the transmitter and multiple antennas at the receiver. So uh, I'll start with the transmitter side. Uh, 
for this. Uh, I'll just briefly go through the uh, MIMO system, which is multiple input and multiple output antenna system. So for example, this is antenna one, this is antenna two, and we have antennas up to N antennas at the transmitter side. And then we have the receiver side. Uh, I think I should use the blue color for the receiver. So um, in the receiver side, let's say this is my the receiver side. And then we have again receiving antenna one, receiving antenna two up to N antennas at the receiver antenna as well. So if you look at here, there are multiple antenna here at the transmitter side, right? And then there are multiple antenna also at the receiver side. So that's why we call it multiple input and multiple output. So what is input and what is output? In between, I have told you, this is our channel, right? So the input goes to the channel and the output comes from the channel. That's why we are calling it input because this is inputting to the channel and we call it output because the output is coming from the channel. And then I have also explained you that the channel is not clear. It is only clear if the transmitter and the receiver side, for example, this is the transmitter and this is your receiver and they are both in line of sight communication, which means that they can see each other very directly. There is no obstruction in between them. And if they can see each other directly and no obstruction is there, that means that uh, the channel will be considerably clear. And then you will have a flat fading channel, which means that you will not have any errors or any degrading degradation in that error. But in practice, you have some kind of deep fading there are the frequency selective fading there. And this, this frequency selective fading is coming because of the delay caused by the signal, a multi-path signal, because there are multi-paths there and I have explained all uh, that part to you. Uh, multi-path of the signal is impinging on new receiver and when receiver receives those multiple uh, copy of the same signal, that makes your signal, your received signal erratic. And the channel gain also experience some deep fading. And if you have some kind of, uh, for example, this is here, are you sending your data? Are you sending your data here? Because of this fading, because of this fading, your uh, data will get corrupted, right? So uh, if it is the line of sight communication, uh, which means that they can see each other. In that case, you have flat fading. You have this kind of scenario. But otherwise, and uh, when there is obstacle in between the transmitter and receiver, which means the transmitter and receiver cannot see each other directly. In that case, this will experience, this will always experience some fading or there will be some frequency selective fading. Okay, now let's come back to the MAMO concept. And the MAMO concept, here are multiple antenna at the transmitter side, and there, then there are multiple antenna at the receiver side, and then the channel, and the channel is always erratic, so there is noise term also in the channel. So the channel, uh, 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 maybe there might be some reflection, refraction, diffraction, or something. Okay, let me go through these uh, channel degrading phenomena, and then uh, because I'm usually using this term, reflection, refraction, diffraction, and all the stuff, absorption, uh, let me explain you briefly what these things are. And then uh, it will be very clear to you that what are the uh, channel degrading things. So what is reflection? Here is your, uh, for example, transmitter. And this is your transmitting antenna. And let me, okay. And then you have a receiver here. And this is your receiving antenna. So when the, there is, for example, a building, right? And your signal, is strike of this building and then at going back to your receiver. So this kind of thing is called the reflection where the angle of incident is equal to the angle of reflection, right? So uh, that happens in most of the cases, uh, if you have the 
flat surface if the surface is flat then it means that reflection will uh, occur but what if the surface is not flat the surface is very rough like this if the surface is very rough like that then this signal is tracked of this uh, rough surface it is the rough surface and multiple copies are produced here because of this um, rough surface and that leads to further multipath and these because of this scattery surface or rough surface here you will receive multiple copies like this then it will reflect back to here for example and eventually it will be but this rough surface also called some scattering it is also the form of reflection but in reflection the surface is very flat and when the surface is very rough then multiple copy of the same incident signal will be created uh, then we have diffraction so uh, let me erase the, this one what is diffraction so if you have a building for example like that and your signal is transmitted here and it just hit the edge of the building then the angle will a little bit change and de deviate it from its de destination. So this is called diffraction. So diffraction actually changes the angle of um, incoming signal. So if the signal was intended to go directly here, it will go to some, it will diffract to some other place. So this is called diffraction. And then you have absorption, some which is occurring uh, usually in the wi-fi system so let me erase everything to make it very clear so what is absorption for example you have a wall okay so in this wall the your signal is going through here and then finally it is re reached to your receiver so uh, this wall will have the thickness of the wall it depends on the thickness of the wall when the wall is very thick or if it is very solid for example it's made of metal with very, very solid metal or it is concrete then there will be um, sorry concrete okay if it is very solid uh, obstacle then it means that it will uh, absorb the absorption rate will be very high it will absorb more of your signal and the signal at the other side of the wall other side of the wall will be very weak but if it is thin or the uh, obstruction between the transmitter and the receiver it is very light for example just a paper or just a kind of whiteboard in between the transmitter and receiver or very thin medium then in that case this uh, wall cannot degrade this kind of obstruction cannot degrade the it can degrade but the degradation will be very less so the absorption will be very less in that medium so absorption depends on the type of uh, obstruction. So if this is very heavy material stuff, the, uh, the wall is made of very heavy material stuff, then the absorption will be higher. Otherwise, it will be not that much higher. And then we have the, after the, and this one, we also have the um, refraction. So refraction is also, also almost like that, but it depends on the medium, the angle, uh, of incident a little bit changes uh, um, with the angle of reflection is changed from the angle of incidence because of the medium differences between the two uh, if one medium is dense the other is rear medium then when the angle of incident is coming from the rear medium into the denser medium its angle will be changed uh, but that is not that much important here and then yeah, so we covered the reflection, diffraction, scattering, absorption. And I think that is uh, enough. Yeah, that is enough. So the scattering example is a tree, for example. If you have a tree here and the incoming signal hits the tree, then there will be multiple leaves here, right? So the leaves might uh different uh, the leaves might scatter your signal like that and so, so such kind of uh, 
multiple reflection from a single incoming reflection. For example, if your incoming reflection from the single incoming incident uh, signal, for example, this is your incident array, and then the output rays are one, two, three, four, five, six, and a lot, uh, and so on. So those kind of multiple reflected rays are called the scattering. So because of these, all these um, phenomena that I explained you, these degrading things, they are causing some errors in the chain, uh, errors. They are causing some errors in the uh, channel. And those errors are basically uh, corrupting your input signal, the, your transmitted signal. So the signal is transmitted here, then it is reached here. So if you had transmitted 1010, 1, 0, 1, 0. you may receive, for example, 1111 1, 1, 1, or 0101 1, 1, 1, or 1011, 1, 1, or maybe the correct version of the signal is 1010. 1, it depends. It depends on the uh, impurity of this channel, like how much the channel is bad. Right? So uh, all these errors can happen in the channel. So ultimately, what I mean from this is when you have the channel and this channel will have a gain. And this gain depends on the those stuff, absorption, reflection, reflection that I just explained. So if your channel is very clean, for example, if you have this kind of case, line of sight case, then your channel gain will be very good, very high. But if you have uh, in a very erratic channel, then in that case, your uh, channel will have lower gain. Uh, so what it means that uh, you have the transmitting antenna uh, from here and the receiving antenna here and multiple antenna are intended for increasing the spectral efficiency and also the data rate. So um, uh, the channel, if the errors are occurred in the channel, uh, you have, for example, the input symbol, which is here, and the output symbol, it is coming here. So already you know what a symbol is. For example, we are using the QPSK here in the transmitter side, QPSK, and you have four symbol here. For example, this one symbol, uh, for example, this is one, this is two, this is three, and this one is four. So if we plot the waveform for them, one, two, three, and Four. So, for example, the first one is the plus cause. So, let me plot it like that up to t. So, the symbol duration is t. Then, this is the first number. Then, the second one is the plus sign. So, it should be something like that up to the t. Then, the third one is minus cause. So, it should be something like that up to the t. And then, the fourth one is minus sign. So, it should be some thing like that. So you have four different waves which can transmit the four, uh, these four constellation, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So you are transmitting something at the transmitter side. And let's say the, we call it XI, the symbol or we calling it XI. So X1, X2, X3, and X4, we are going to transmit the X1, X2, X3, and X4 symbol. When it is received here, as I told you in the previous lecture, that uh, because of the channel degrading phenomena that I just explained you, instead of the symbol to be received at this point, it will be received with some kind of rotation, like maybe like that. And uh, this rotation depends on the number of scatters and number of uh, errors in your channel. So if your channel is very bad, then it, it, it will be very uh, affected that this this rotation will be very uh, higher. And uh, sometimes it can completely corrupt your symbols because of the wrong dis estimation. So uh, when you receive the signal, let's say we, we call it uh, this one Y1, Y2, Y3, and Y4. So you transmitted something like this, X1, X2, X3, X4, and then you received something like Y1, Y2, Y3, and Y4. So how do I estimate the Y1 
this y1 to be exactly similar to x1 because the x1 was at this position, right? But we received something with a little bit offset. Little bit or it can be more offset. Or how can I do, for example, uh, this is uh, x2 was here, right? But here we received the y2 at this position. Similarly, x3 was here, but we received the y3 at this position and y4 at this position. So this kind of um, rotation, which has been caused at the receiver side, you have to estimate the correct symbol from that one. And to do that, you need to design a matrix for the channel. So here you need some, here you have the H matrix, right? So let's say, let's call the channel gain as H. So because of the channel gain, your input symbol, uh, sorry, your output symbol is this time, this plus noise. So let's say you have N1, N2, N3 plus N4 noise. So N1 is noise is associated with X1, N2 noise is associated with X2, N3 noise is associated with X3. And then X1 is also H times of the H times plus N1, and which will give you Y1. In other words, this H is the channel gain. So the channel gain again depends on those phenomena. So the channel gain times the input symbol plus the noise will gives you this y1 and this y1 will have some rotation so to estimate the correct one you need to design this matrix you need to design this channel matrix in such a way that it is empty of the whatever degrading phenomena has happened there so as i told you here there are errors right so you have to create something anti-error Right, so to create the anti-error, if the channel gain was if the channel gain was h, right, then you have to create something like h inverse of that, h inverse of that. So, in other words, if you say that if you have something like error, this is anti-error. For that thing, we need an equalizer at the receiver. So when our signal is received at the receiver, so there might be some channel degrading phenomena happen because of these things. And because of this, we want to compensate these, uh, we want to remove the any error that has been uh, created there. We need some anti-error stuff. And for that, we need some equalizer at the receiver stage. So, we will be studying a very simple step of the equalizer. So the first one is the zero, zero forcing uh, equalizer. So we have the received symbol, which is the uh, Y1, Y2, Y3 up to Y4. And this is equal to, this is equal to the uh, H, H1, H2, H3, H4, which is your channel gain. And then you have the uh, transmitted symbol, which is X1, X2, X3, X4. And then plus, this is the transmitted symbol. And then you have the uh, noise. So N1, N2, N3, and N4. Now to... Uh, recover we have to play with only this term in the zero forcing equalizer and for that what we do we create if i simply write down this in a mathematical form i will say that y for our y1 y2 y3 y4 vector so it's represented by y and let's say this is h and this is x plus n so this is our uh, received symbol this received signal Received signal is denoted by y in this term, and it is equal to hx plus y. So you already know the term. I don't have to explain what is h, what is n, right? So to uh, recover the symbol, we have to create h inverse of the this term. Uh, sorry, not this one. We have to create h inverse, and h inverse of what? What we receive. 
So uh, hx plus n, right? So we have to create something like that. And what is this thing? This whole thing is h inverse of y, right? And what is this thing? This is your estimated symbol. What is, we, let's say we are denoting by x hat. So x hat is your estimated symbol and you it is equal to what we were calling h inverse. h inverse was something like anti noise thing and anti error thing. And then this this the uh, signal that you received already that is denoted by y. Now, um, if we uh, take a look at this thing, this uh, h inverse, this is actually your design matrix. So it depends how carefully you are designing this matrix. And if your this design matrix is good enough, then it can uh, compensate for all the errors that happened in the uh, ch channel, which was from transmitter to the receiver side. So uh, when we mul when we uh, multiply the H inverse with H, it will give us one. And then the final equation will become like this. X head is equal to H inverse H of X plus uh, H inverse of N noise. And this will be equal to X plus N, uh, sorry, H inverse N. Now you can see if the noise term is very lower, if it is very low uh, or it is of low quantity, then we can almost get exactly the same replica of the transmitter symbol, which means that the zero forcing equalizer will perform very better. But what will happen if the noise is very high or uh, your H, this, this is L condition which means that if your channel uh, gain, it is almost equal to zero, then in that case, your H inverse will be equal to infinity, almost infinity. So if you have a very low channel gain, in that case, it means that the channel is very erratic. When the channel is very erratic, in that case, the this design matrix value will be very high because it is inverse of H. And in that case, you will have X, which is, you can say that it is exactly the same signal as that of transmitted one, but something very high. And this high value will cause the zero forcing equalizer. This is the main drawback of the zero forcing equalizer that in the worst channel condition, the zero forcing performs very poorly. But if you have a reasonable channel gain and the H matrix is defined carefully, the H inverse is designed very carefully. In that case, you have, you can, uh, your zero forcing equalizer will perform better. Uh, then how to compensate this one? Uh, how to get rid of this, this thing? Because this is a very big drawback of the zero forcing equalizer. There is advanced variant of the zero forcing equalizer, which is called the zero forcing precoder. So uh, let me draw that diagram again. You have the transmitting antennas. You have a couple of antennas. You have the transmitter size. This is T1, T2, and up to Tn. And then you have the receiver receiver here. And then you have a couple of receiving antenna as well. One, two, up to N. Uh, then you have the channel here, which is H. Let's say your transmitter is transmitting the symbol, uh, the, the symbol here, and then it is passing through the channel and finally it is received. Uh, there is something which is called the channel state information or the CSI. So what is the purpose of channel state information? The channel state information basically tells the receiver, it tells the receiver that how good the channel is. So the receiver understand that, oh, my channel, is, when, at once first second when the uh, signal was received, the channel quality was this one. But the next second, at second number two, when the signal symbol was received, uh, the channel quality was 
like de deteriorated. For example, if it is your channel quality and this is your time axis, so you will it can understand that what is the channel condition at particular time. And if all the time the channel is very good, it is flat, then in that case, it can say that it's it's it has the confidence that it is very good channel. So uh, what the transmitter does, it feedback those information to the what the receiver does, sorry. The receiver feedback those information, those uh, channel information to the transmitter side. So the transmitter side uh, understand that, okay, what, what is the condition of the channel? And then it will add some precoder matrix. So precoder matrix is also some kind of uh, designing matrix. It will be like this. Uh, transmitter will transmit the signal as H inverse, which is the precoder matrix. And then the channel gain, which it, which it, which it knows, and X plus omega so they will cancel each other and we will left with x plus um, sorry this let me call it noise to make it consistent x plus n now you your noise is not accompanied with this term this term right previously it was h inverse n so if the n h inverse value was very high in that case you were having a very high amount of um, errors but here you have the actual noise that is arising in the channel, you have lower noise term, and you are also getting the clean version of your symbol that was transmitted. So here the Y is very, sorry, the X tilde is very good. Then there are other types of um, equalizer also, for example, to compensate with, uh, to compensate for this one, there are also some other type of equalizer, for example, the um, MMSE third number, for example, MMSE equalizer, or there is, for example, SVD equalizer. But let's not discuss that because it's like very complicated and also beyond the scope of this lab. So we will be covering this zero forcing, not even the zero precoder matrix, but we will be covering the very simplest form, which is the zero forcing equalizer. Right, so I hope this is quite clear now. And now let's move to the other part of the um, lecture, which is the demodulation. So what's happening in the demodulation part? So in the modulation part, you had seen that um, you had to, in the phasor diagram, we had the um, N phase and we had the quadrature phase. And then uh, uh, we were expressing our symbol in between the N phase and quadrature phase. For example, we were in the previous diagram, we, in the previous example, we just saw the symbol were transmitted like this. So the modulation part, the symbol that I think I don't have to explain the modulation part again, but you just see the, let's say we, the in phase term times cause of the signal plus this quadrature term times the sign of the sig signal. And then they are added up together and they are transmitted. So this is your, for example, the output. This was your modulation. The modulation part was like this, but in uh, the demodulation part, it's a bit uh, reciprocal way. Your RF signal is coming like that. And then you have a local oscillator. Well, the local oscillator is the built-in uh, oscillator. So your input signal is going the same as this one. And then your output signal is 90 degree phase shifted. So here, if you see they are 90 degree apart, right? So that they are 90 degree phase shifted. And then you have the output here, output from the quadrature phase and output from the uh, output from the end phase and output from the quadrature phase. 
So you have the output from both the phases here by just inverting the uh, input with 90 degree by using the local oscillator. So we will see uh, the modulation, demodulation part and the demodulation part in the programming is also quite reciprocal to data of what we had done in the modulation. So let's, let, let me switch to the main screen and uh, we will cover the, yeah, we will cover the programming part now. So uh, there are a couple of types of the equalizer like zero forcing, MMS equalizer, zero forcing recorder, SVD, et cetera, et cetera. And then uh, we have to do the demodulation. So demodulation is at 44. It's reciprocal to that we had done in the uh, previous part, which was the modulation part. So any RF that is coming from there, it is given to the and uh, these multipliers and these multipliers are also connected to the local oscillator. So on one side, the local oscillator is giving the zero degree phase shift and the other side, it is giving the 90 degree of the phase shift. So the zero degree of the phase shift, which means that whatever the signal is coming, it is being out as it is. So it will give you the end phase term and the 90 degree of the, um, uh, will it will shift it by 90 degree, the, it will shift the phase by 90 degree and it will give you the quadrature phase. So when you see it in the phasor diagram, then you now you have two terms, you have both the axis value, the end phase term and also the, the value uh, at the quadrature. In other words, it is something like it, it will give you the value at the x axis and it will give you the value at the y axis. So you have the value of our x and y axis and now you can express the constellation somewhere in the phasor diagram. Now, based on that, you can, after that, you can estimate um, the correct one, the, the, the correct, um, based on the decision boundary. So uh, I'll go to the, I'll now switch to the MATLAB. And let's start the uh, receiver side. So previously uh, we covered the transmitter side. So the transmitter con side contained all these blocks. So that we saw earlier, all these blocks were contained in the transmitter side. Then we had a channel. So here you will see this is the channel. And now we are dealing with the receiver side. So this is our receiver. So for uh, the receiver side, firstly, we have to um, design the zero forcing equalizer. So for the zero forcing R, I can also express it as simply by zero forcing ZF. Uh, let's keep it the same name, zero forcing, and I will equate it here, ZF. Okay, uh, let me say that the channel gain is one, and let me make a new function uh, like this, and let me call this function as the zero forcing uh, equalizer. So uh, I'll call it the uh, ZF and let's say this is the channel gain and this is, let's say, this is my input. And let's say my output is only one term and it is called X estimation, for example, XH. Okay, uh, now let's uh, work on this one. Let's work on this function. So my input, this is my function. I can copy it to the main program here. So what is my H? 
H or how about I call it H. Okay, so here is my H and this is my data. So what is my data? I have four types of data. One type is the channel BPSK. So the channel BPSK using the AWGN channel. Then the, cha the QAM, four QAM using the AWGN channel. Then we had the uh, relay channel using the BPSK. And then we had the uh, four QAM uh, using the ray channel. So I copy these uh, one by one. For example, the this is the first one. This one is the first one. So I'll say that this is my first data. And then control C, control V, control V, control V. Okay. And then um, I should copy the next one, which is my this data, and it is this one. And then I should copy this one should be here, and then I should copy this one, which should come at the last. This one. So I have the channel gain, which is just simply equal to one, and then it is AWGN output, which is the for the BPSK. AWGN output for the core QAM, then the relay channel output for the BPSK, and the relay channel output for the uh, for QAM. Please remember, we are using only a sim, uh, single uh, antenna at the output and single antenna at the input. So we have a SISO system, a very simple system. We are not using the MAMO system that I just explained you before. So uh, let me call it, for example, the zero forcing underscore. Uh, since we are using the hem encoding, so like this, and this is for the AWGN, and for the BPSK, I'll just type the two, right? So I'll just copy it and I'll paste it here as well. And let's say for the four QAM, I will use four, and yeah, everything I will keep it like this. And then let's say I will again, and instead of that, how about I write like R A Y C H a n two so let's say i wrote this one for the bpsk relay channel and then the zero forcing equal is like at the for the four qam and the output of the relay channel so they will um they are the input arguments and the output argument should be this one so let's go and work on our this function so first of all i should save it okay so i saved it and now let's work on it so what to do with this one uh, let's say i should label it um, r is Signal at the receiver and H is my impulse response of the channel. In other words, it is the how my channel is behaving. Okay. And then uh, let's uh, first compute the inverse impulse response. So For that, uh, we have to use, for example, GD as my name, the output, and I'm taking the transfer function of the H comma one. So it, it will basically give me the transfer function is the numerator divided by something to be written in the P by Q form. So the uh, transfer function will give me coefficient for the numerator, and also it will give me coefficients for the denominator. Since we have used h is equal to one for sake of simplicity. So even the denominator and the numerator both will be one. So there will not be uh, any significant difference, but it depends if you are using some different type of the channel response, then in that case, it will be definitely different. 
So this is the, for example, I can say that this is my gain of the chain. So the gain, you know that the gain is the output divided by the input and that can be expressed with the transfer function. And to uh, design the matrix for the zero forcing, I should make it inward. So it's kind of like GD, one more GD. And I can say they're taking inverse of the chain. Okay. So, okay. And now uh, let's extract the numerator and denominator data from the transfer function. So we have a built-in function, which is the TF data. So TF data extract the numerator and denominator coefficient from the transfer function. So we have the inverse of the transfer function, and then we have to extract the value in the form of vector. So let me comment it as well for your understanding. Extracting numerator and denominator uh, coefficient. I C I E N T. Okay, so that is it. And then now let's implement the zero forcing. So for the zero forcing, I am saying like let's say my x h, which is my output, that is equal to. Uh, let me apply the filter and the filter needs the numerator and denominator. So this is my numerator, which I extracted from here. And also I will copy the denominator value, which is here. And then I will also copy my input, my incoming data, which is here. So what we did, we just simply uh, firstly applied the transfer function for the channel gain that we got from the input, which is coming from here. And actually, we have used only one. So the H is also one. So the transfer function is one over one. So it's one. So the gain is one. So the channel gain is one, which is very good. And then we will just take the inverse of the channel gain just to design a, a zero forcing term. And then we have to extract the numerator and denominator coefficient. So whatever is on the highest, uh, higher side and the lower side of the uh, word sign the, the numerator and denominator coefficients that will be expected using this built in function. And then I'm using the filter and using the numerator and the denominator coefficient and using my input data, which is coming from there, from my input. And what is my in incoming data? Incoming data is my AWG and output uh, for the BPSK and AWG and output for the four form, then the ray channel, and then also for the four form ray channel. Right, so I think, uh, yeah, this that is it, and I will press Control I button just to. Okay, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's already saved. Okay. Okay, so this is done, and now let me go to the come back to the lab again. So my uh, zero forcing equalizer is ready. Now, what is the next part? Next part is my demodulation. So demodulation and programming is almost the reciprocal for process of what we had done for the modulation part. It's not that much different. So, uh, let's say I am calling it H2 is equal to, uh, and if I say that the BPSK demodulation, uh, A BPSK demodulation in the MATLAB. And then, yeah, I can simply copy this part and I'll paste it here. So, BPSK demodulator and what is um, here. But yeah, I, I think I have seven rows here, right? I have, 
seven rows and one or two for columns. And this demodulation is applying, applied column by column. So firstly, I should extract, I should apply the for loop. So I should use, since this is, this length is similar for all, for, for the four form, it's also one or two, four, seven dimension is similar for the four form, or it's also similar for the uh, uh, BPSK, and it's also similar for the ray chain, and it's also for, so I will just take only one of the variables simply randomly, for example, I'm for, I is equal to uh, one colon length of length of let's say this one and then n. So uh, and firstly, I think I should just define it here. Okay, so uh, this one and this will create an object for the BPSK demodulator H2. And now I can use this object to demodulate all my incoming zero forcing um, and the output from the zero forcing equalizer. So I can say that uh, AWGN demodulated signal for the BPSK. And then I can say it for the, for the, the hand encoding. And then I can say that, let's say, I'm doing it column by column and I'm saving it into the this with this matrix and then I say that h2 which is my this object for the demodulator and then I am simply copying this one and I'm demodulating this one and then also I'm performing this operation on column wise so column by column since I have one or two four columns and each column contains seven data so seven is actually the d interleaver output so mm, uh, like that and just for simplicity i will copy it four times one two three four so let's say i'm calling it four so i'm calling it four and i'm calling this one uh region so let's say uh, region, and I'm also calling this one as region. Uh, let me make it easy. Okay, so copy it, paste it, copy it, paste it, copy it, and paste. And let's run it. And oh, I shouldn't have done that. I should put the semicolon here, 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 and here so that I cannot see all this because it takes a lot of time. When you put the semicolon, then it will not show you the uh, anything in the command window. So uh, this is my output here. So this is, if you see, it is in the zero one form and also the region output is in the zero one form before the before this the modulated it was in the complex form which was like this so it seems like it is working fine but we don't know how much fine it is working because we will see it in the at the end when we compute the bit error rate for this one so far it looks fine but we cannot say how much good it is so I think this is all for today. So we covered two blocks, the zero forcing equalizer and also the uh, demodulation part. And it is also here. So the zero forcing equalizer and here it is also, I think this is the dimension of the output. Mm, it should be like this. And also this should be again like that. So our dimension is coming like that, that, that. Why I'm showing you the dimension? Because uh, when we perform the black, uh, we, when we perform something reciprocal to the Hamming coding, in that case, we should see, we should convert, we should be able to see that the seven cross one or two four is converted back to the four cross one or two four. So, so that we can see that the flow of data 
we added something here, then we did something here, then we did, and I think it's, uh, it should be 0, 9, 2, 6. Uh, what is the dimension of the trend of bit generation? Uh, Total bits is that one, and then the source bit. Yeah, four plus one o two four. It is four plus one o two four. Sorry, this is a mistake. Four plus one o two four. So when we receive our output signal, it should be four plus one o two four, like that. So I think uh, that is it. And if you have any concern with the lab or if you are performing it during uh, you get some error or there is some problem, you can just reach to me through this email and you can also attach the snapshot. So I'll try my best to um, help you with your problem, okay? So that's it uh, and thank you for having your attention and I'll see you in the next lab. Bye-bye.